Oh my god, that is just... What now? Oh shoot, we're rolling back. Uh, oh my god, it's still doing it. My car just hit the hedge on the left-hand side. Welcome everybody to Tesla Driver. Today we're gonna to be testing autopilot in some pretty interesting conditions. Uh, today, actually, Storm Gareth hit the UK. I know it's not exactly a deadly, a deadly name, is it? But it's expected to win, uh, bring winds of up to 80 miles an hour, which I'm pretty sure even like category one hurricanes have uh, from like 70 miles an hour. So it's a really windy day is what I'm basically trying to tell you. I'm, I'm gonna see how the autopilot system works in windy and a little bit wet. You can see there is a little bit of rain here as well. Now we've started off autopilot on quite a wide road. And as you can see, it's hugging the right hand side. I've also added this left lane camera. So that hopefully will show you how close we get to some of the lines and some of the other bits. Now, I took in your feedback from the last video. Thank you guys so much for uh, letting me know what you think. I've got to slow right down because it's not going to judge that. There we go. You see, we needed to slow down way, way before. Uh, and there's also a car appearing every now and then on the left side, uh, on the screen down here, which I don't know if you saw, but it was a little bit odd. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bad throat as well this morning. That actually might be my camera showing up. Yeah, that might be, that might be my GoPro because I'm, I'm seeing a little person on the dash. I don't know if you guys keep on seeing that, but anyway, uh, let's keep it going. It doesn't seem to be causing any issues, so that's quite nice. And uh, it seems to be tracking the lines really, really well. So yeah, you guys said in the last video that you really enjoyed it. You wanted a little bit of variation with cameras and, and stuff like that. So I've tried to show you that in this video. And it's basically gonna be as well as I can explaining autopilot to you in different conditions, on different roads and in different areas. So thank you guys for uh, letting me know you really liked it and I'll continue to do it. We're getting a person now on the side of the thing. I might need to pull over and just really quickly sort that out because that's gonna really, really bug me otherwise. Yeah, it's still there. So I'm just going to pull in here real quick and get that camera sorted, one second. Okay, hopefully that sorted it out and we are a little bit clearer now and we don't have the guy keep on cropping up on that side, which is a little bit strange. So this road actually is a little bit of a tough one and you'll see why in a minute. It not only has really bumpy left-hand side of the road, especially coming up here, we're gonna be all over the place in a second, which the new stabilization of these GoPros that I'm using sadly seems to buff it out. But I don't know if you can see the steering wheel's pulling left and we're kind of doing this little jolty thing, which is a little bit odd. I'm actually going to see if I can go into the right-hand lane here by using the indicators. It does say that I can. I'm just gonna make sure these cars go first because obviously I don't want anyone thinking they can overtake. So I'm gonna give it a go and see if it does it. No, it doesn't wanna do it. So even though this is a dual carriageway, although it's a single lane on that side, so it still has the 60 rules. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit off here. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't too bad, actually. That focused that quite well. Uh, because it had two carriages, but only one on the other side, it doesn't like to move lanes like it would on a normal dual carriageway, which is quite interesting. We're getting quite a bit of wet weather as well. Oh man, we're being pushed about. I don't know if you can hear the wind noise, but it is pushing the car all over the place. And this is a really good test for it. This is really what I wanted to see how well autopilot can do. Now this is a very, very wide road and it doesn't have a left lane marker. So as you can see, the car is not snaking, but it's it's kind of lost within this space. It doesn't know whether to go tight to this bit or tight to the left. And being someone that drives this road nearly every day, we tend to stick closer to the left, even closer than that forward is, because you can actually get a car on the left, car on the right, and someone can overtake in the middle. Uh, so even, you know, three people on one, on one road, if that makes sense. And that's what everyone does around here, but, um, the Tesla is going to make that hard because if someone was trying to do that now, obviously it wouldn't have got over. But it seems to be doing pretty well with these roads. Now, all we're doing is a very quick route to Swindon. And I just wanted to see because it has these huge open plains, as you can see here. So we're really getting buffeted and pushed around by the wind. And I am getting quite a bit of swaying from it, but it's not as bad as I thought. I thought it would really be struggling but it seems to counter it quite well i don't know if you guys can hear the wind if i put this window down a tiny bit oh my god there we go and it's asking me to apply some more force to the steering wheel and do that back up because that's really windy and we're going around this corner and it's doing it quite well it is getting quite close to the left hand side though every now and then i'm getting some red 
proximity warnings on the screen. And I'm intrigued to see how close that really is. We're hitting a couple of potholes or a little couple of grids anyway. And now we're coming up to a roundabout. And I'm gonna let Tesla slow itself down because we should catch up with that Ford and bring ourselves to a little bit more of an aggressive stop. But there are people on the road ahead, so actually I'm just gonna pull it down myself. You're gonna accept it now? No. Now, there we go. Okay, so let's do, uh, this is a 60 up here, but it is quite hairy. So we'll just do 50 up it. Okay, I think the winds are dying down a little bit. We are getting, we are getting pushed around though. We are getting pushed around. And I'm seeing some different, definitely some different vehicles come up on the dash. Like I'm getting odd ones of people on the other side of the road going the same way as me and stuff. So I don't know if maybe the wet weather is causing a little bit of confusion maybe, I'm not sure. And this comes down now into a 30. So I'm just gonna pull it all the way back down before we get into 30. There we go. But again, the Tesla does need to learn to kind of do that on its own. All right, interesting. We're actually gonna be losing the middle line right now. Oh, the car just started to like try to pull all the way left, but I just grabbed on and it's focused itself back into the middle now. See, I've got quite far right. And did you see the little weird kind of uh, angle it did on there? That was a little bit odd. So I'm not sure what it's going to do here. This is an insanely tight corner of which I'm going to go like all the way down to 24. But it did it really well, actually. Until there. And then I had to stop it. Okay, we've got a big lorry. I'm not going to test it when there's a big lorry and I need to tuck in. Did that really, really well actually at 60. And in come the left line, which hopefully will help it get around this corner nicely. Yeah, we don't need to do too much slowing down. We have got these funny lines here in the UK, those arrows, and some people have asked me what they're for. They're basically get in your own lane arrows. So it's, it's oh, I'm hitting stuff. Okay, there you go. So my car just hit the hedge on the left-hand side. I'm not sure if the camera got that, but um, that apparently was too tight for it. Yeah, let's see, it's it's slamming on and then it does this weird kind of driving thing and then we've got a little dip. So definitely on these roads that don't have a left lane or a left line even, it's really, really struggling to regulate how close it can get, which makes me question how sensitive or how good the proximity sensors are and all the other sensors are uh, in the car. You know, I would hope that it wouldn't scratch on the side of a, a of a hedge like that but apparently it does overall so far it's been kind of a mixed bag it's worked on some things and not very well on our other bits but it's kind of failed at bits i would expect it to so this is a big oh that's a little belly uh what do they call it belly rumble or whatever we've got another one up here and this is actually a blind completely blind like apex verge or whatever you want to call it but it did it absolutely fine which is really really good And it's not struggling down these roads, it seems at all. So I think we're gonna be able to go the speed limit of 60 and cruise our way down this road. We are getting close to the left though. Very, very close, or at least it feels it. Again, I'm, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like on that camera, but it feels very, very close to the left side there. Now, I have also tried auto wipers before but it's been pretty uh, pretty bad. So I'm gonna put auto wipers on. I'm not sure where it is, is it in vehicle? There it is, auto wipers. So we're now in auto wiper mode and it's going nuts, as you can clearly see. <laughs> it really is speeding up the wipers quite a lot there. And I've, I've pulled the speed down because again, it's not reading the signs or it's not preemptive on slowing down. So we've got a bus coming up ahead, which obviously I've seen. Oh my God, that is just, 
I had to pull off there, otherwise we were going into that hedge. I'm not sure why there, he didn't want to do it. That is just the best thing about this car. Just blisters past people whenever you want to. Okay, so we've got a pretty interesting S bend here that I'm gonna pull it down to 54. But even at 50, I'm not 100% confident, but let's see. Whoa, not quite. Come on, you got this corner, you got this corner. Oh, going over the cat's eyes. Oh, interesting. Don't know what that noise was about. And I didn't get to read the little message at the bottom. But it was trying to tell me something. All right, it did it okay. I did it okay. Now, those signs definitely said 50. The car is definitely saying that it's a 60. So that needs updating for sure. But again, this is a really big open kind of plane and we're getting a lot of wind pushing us about, but the car's coping quite well. All things considered, I was expecting it to actually be a lot worse. I'm definitely feeling getting pushed and I feel, I feel like I'm being pushed to the left. I don't know if, you know, the car normally feels like it's going to the left anyway, but now it feels like it's really being pushed to the left. So I think that might be the wind doing something. The wipers are having a little bit of a fun time as well, speeding up for some reason. And now they're slowing back down. We're getting really close to this left side. Oh my God. I might just get a pair of really like crap, shit, cheap alloys so that if I do curb it, it's not a big issue. <laughs> but then obviously I'm not gonna do that. That's not serious. I'm not doing that. But this is working really well. And there's our goal, everybody. There is Swindon. So as we get down to this hill, we're gonna hit one set of traffic lights and I'm gonna end the video there. But there's Swindon in all the foggy, wet, miserable British goodness uh, that we've come to expect of our fabulous country. To finish this town city autopilot test off, I'm gonna go try and find a car parking space and see how the auto park features work. Wow, where are we going? I have no idea, but I'm letting it do its thing right in the middle of the road, apparently. So we're gonna try and find a space for us to park here in this little industrial estate. I'm sure there's, actually it's not very busy, so it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle to actually find a space. So the idea of this is that obviously when it does it on its own or when it does the whole auto drive system on its own, it should be able to go down a car park like this and find a parking space. So let's see, there we go, we found one. Okay, I'm gonna try and get myself into that parking space. Let's see how well it works. Hopefully we don't bang any cards and hopefully it doesn't take too long. I think, you know, 20 seconds to park is about enough. Oh my God, this is gonna be way more than 20 seconds. Wow, what was the point in that? What? What? Okay. Is this like a 10 point park? What now? Oh shoot, we're rolling back. Uh, oh my God, it's still doing it. I thought it stopped. Okay. Wow, this is being super slow. I'm just looking around to make sure no one's around watching this embarrassment. <laughs> it's an ama you know, it's amazing tech, but I've seen a Ford Focus do the same thing a lot quicker. This needs updating. This feels, this feels nowhere near fully autonomous. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't give you that good feeling. Okay. And we're done. And I haven't touched a thing and we're done. It has put me in potentially the worst place a car could put someone. Here is, is parked, just for reference, there. Why did that take so long? Right, I'm even, you know what I'm gonna do really quick? I'm gonna go do that myself. This is how I would park, just personally, in that space, and this is actually just using the cameras. I actually said there that it want, wanted to park itself. Don't worry, that was just the wheels, by the way. <clears throat> the wheels do rub. I've got um, one of my, what do you call it? Under linings is all ruined. So yeah, 
Do you know what I mean? Like that, that took way too long for the car to, to park in this space. Let's find one more space. Okay, are we gonna get any of these? I, I've just driven past, there we go. Like I was gonna say, I've driven past loads of spaces. There we go, so we found a space. I'm gonna give it its best shot and we're gonna try and reverse park into it. So it's between, I think it's that Citroen and that Focus that it wants to do it. And obviously I'm ready on the brake in case we need it. And of course to accelerate if we need to accelerate for whatever reason, but it's, that's it. There you go. Okay. And we're going to do one more turn. I just want to see if it actually can do it because it really failed earlier, didn't it? So I want to see if this really can do it if we just gave it some time. And the beautiful thing is while it's doing this, I can get ready for my chicken sandwich. That's all I get, by the way. That's that's going to be my lunch for today because there's only, what was it, 388 calories and it tastes delicious. So as we've been looking and opening up our chicken sandwich, ah, oh, it's all sideways. The car has parked and it actually did it successfully. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, everybody. Comment down below anything else you want to see. Hit that like button. Drive safe. See you in the next one.